Hey, this is Evan at Lux BMX. Uh, we get a lot of questions about free coasters. Uh, there's certainly a lot of different types of systems on the market. Uh, what I really think I'd like to address is basically how systems work. So the different relationships between different components on hubs, it's actually gonna make it a lot easier to understand uh, how your free coaster works, uh, all the different components and how the systems work. So short of going through every single hub that's available, which we'll, we'll wanna do at a later date, um, but if you can understand the systems, how they work, it makes it a lot easier. So if we think about a free coaster hub uh, and we break it down into basically about four systems, you have your driver, your engagement system, so essentially how your driver works in relationship to the clutch. That's your engagement system right there. So obviously as you're pedaling, your clutch is moving relative to the axle, along the axle, when it's working properly, and then it bites into the hub shell. And that's the basic platform for that system that is common across all clutch style free coaster hubs. Uh, the next system we want to talk about is the resistance mechanism which essentially is how the clutch works and how that stays in one position and its relationship to the axle. The resistance mechanism is governed by however the clutch relates to the axle. So some hubs will have a ball and spring system like this one. These little ball bearings, some will have two, some will have three like this one, relate to the inside of the clutch and create drag. So they will maintain the clutch's relationship to the axle. The clutch, essentially, for it to work, it generally needs to stay relative to the axle, moving across that plane like that, from side to side, with minimal rotation. If you start to get rotation, then that's when you start to get engagement problems and slipping, that sort of stuff. So it will rotate once it's fully engaged in the driver, and if you are fully backpedaling, in this case, like this. So it's, it's moved along its range, but it shouldn't move inside its own range of the driver. Uh, the next relationship, which is really important, is the driver on the axle itself. So for a driver to work, and a hub for that matter, the driver needs to stay relative to the axle as much as possible. So with your lock nut tight, So this system is basically your driver bearing to the axle. So if this is all correct, you won't have any movement in the driver on the axle at all. And that'll allow the driver and the driver bearing to support the rest of the hub operation. The next system will be the bearings on the hub itself. So you have your, your non-drive side uh, bearing, your hub shell bearing is quite simple. It's relative to the axle and the hub shell. So that one keeps the axle relative to the hub shell. Your drive side hub shell bearing relies on the driver assembly and the driver being relative to the axle uh, and it will run on the outside of the driver. So that's why the driver system is very important to support this, to, to support the platform for the, the hub shell. So the next system you're looking at would be the resistance mechanism and how the uh, I guess your clutch is relative to the axle and the driver. Uh, essentially, your resistance mechanism work, works across the board in most free coasters exactly the same way. Uh, maintaining the clutch's relationship to the axle, so it should only move axially along the axle when it's, when it's functioning until it engages or fully disengages. Resistance mechanisms can be a number of different styles. You'll see on a lot of popular free coaster hubs, there's a two pin uh, bearing system that sits on the, and runs on the inside of the clutch and that creates a resistance on the clutch against the axle. This particular one is a little different but the concept remains the same. Uh, yeah, basically there's a lot of systems that will work, all your free coaster systems work that same way. So that's your relationship there with your clutch. Now the next system we need to take into consideration is the driver on the axle. One of the key things that people probably overlook with free coasters is that the driver needs to stay relative to the axle at all times for it to work properly. If the driver has any movement at all on the axle, it's not going to support the bearing on the drive side of the hub shell and you're going to get play. So also these are really small bearings. So if there is any play there, it's all forces that are going to get pushed through the hub your bearings are going to explode in your driver quite quickly. Maintaining that relationship between the driver and the axle is crucial for good performance in a free coaster hub. Now, the final relationship 
uh, that you have in your systems in the hub is your hub bearings essentially. So uh, certainly on your non-drive side bearing, it runs relative to the axle. So it's supporting the axle directly in the hub shell. But on your drive side, once again, you're relying on the bearings in the driver and then the bearings on the hub shell on the driver of the outside as well. So coming back to that relationship between the driver there is really crucial. The common issues, uh, I guess, that we get with free coaster hubs, uh, we can address if we can isolate exactly what's going on. So probably the initial uh, query we have, especially with new free coaster hubs, is a clicking sound when the hub's disengaging. Now by that, essentially when the driver is fully engaged, these little teeth here on the outside of the clutch bite into the hub shell when they're new, they're really quite sharp. It's quite a, a sharp edge on that. They'll bite into the hub shell and the clicking sound is often heard when you basically your clutch is engaged and it's locked into the hub shell and then you have to manually disengage it just a fraction for the clutch to be able to pop away from the hub shell. You might get that just initially, just riding along anyway. As soon as you stop pedaling, the clutch wants to pop out because it's going with the wheel and you get a click, you get an audible click. Uh, now that sort of sound is across the board, every single free coaster on the market, every single clutch style free coaster like this, so the vast majority will have that initially uh, from the get go. Um, they will, it will bed in and it will, the sound will die down after a while once these, uh, these teeth have dulled essentially. So uh, it'll be a much smoother kind of feel. Uh, that you can, you can put a little bit of grease around the outside of that clutch sometimes just to kind of make that not as grabby, uh, that can alleviate the sound but you will generally find until that free coaster settles in or the clutch settles in, uh, it will have that sound from the get go. It can be exacerbated by uh, things like a loose driver, so if your driver has, is loose a little bit and it's got freedom to move around that's going to cause the clutch to bite at a bit of an angle uh, and likewise your know, non-drive side lock nuts as well. So if you do have that sort of clicking sound, the first thing I would recommend would be just to check your cones on either side, your lock nuts, just to make sure they're tight. You shouldn't really ever over tighten them that much, but if you can check that, that's a good thing. Now, the next issue we probably get quite a lot is play in the hub. Uh, now, once again, because your non-drive side bearing is the only bearing in the hub that's relative to the axle and the hub shell, you're relying on the driver. So the crucial thing is to make sure that the driver is nice and tight. Normally what I would do uh, in this case, if it's, a, if it's a new hub or even an old hub for that matter, um, if everything else sort of feels good and you've pulled it all apart, uh, you just want to make sure that you can get that driver to be relative to the axle so it stays nice and firm on the axle. It still spins freely, but you're allowing that platform of the driver to support that, that drive side hub shell bearing. If you've taken it apart and you're having a look at it, you want to make sure that the driver bearings are nice and smooth. If they're nice and smooth, that's your first thing that's going to support the whole system. The other thing to take a look at is the shoulders on this bearing seat on the drive side of the axle. Commonly what can happen is that they get compressed. Essentially as the driver is engaging, the clutch bites into the hub shell and it actually pulls the driver in on the axle. So you will notice when an axle's worn out that you'll find that shoulder there gets a little bit of a ridge or it bulges a bit, which will cause the driver to go in a little bit too far sometimes. And that's actually not gonna be supporting the, the bearings very well once it gets to that stage. So certainly something to have a look out for. Most of the time, you'll need to replace the axle if that's affected there. Uh, you can sometimes clean it up if you, you know, if you have access to a lathe, but essentially if that, the integrity of that shoulder is affected, then you're not creating a good system for the driver to work. Moving on from there, if you've created a nice platform, the driver can tighten up. You test the, the lock nut, uh, tightening the, the driver onto the axle and the, and the driver spins freely and doesn't have any play in the driver. The next thing you want to look at is the bearing on the drive side of the hub shell. Uh, because this bearing is so heavily affected by these loads, once again, as the clutch is pulling the driver in, it actually puts load on the inner part of the bearing on the drive side. So you can get play in these bearings and a lot of the time, uh, if you've got play in the hub, you'll be able to notice it there. So if everything else is tight, then you'll have play there. Once that bearing starts to fail though, you're putting all the load back into this non-drive side bearing. Once again, it's the only bearing that is relative from the axle to the hub shell and 
it's relying heavily on that. So if you have a little bit of play there, you're basically going to find that you're, uh, you're going to have play throughout the wheel. They're, the, they're all the things you need to check when you're isolating your bearings in the system for your, your hub shell. The next issue we often get is inconsistent engagement. Now, inconsistent engagement, if you're working off your engagement system, your driver is engaging. You can see how the driver's moving. This one's working really, really well because it's minimal, I guess, lateral movement. It moves along the axle nicely. There's a small amount of movement there. If you had inconsistent engagement, essentially the clutch is going to be spinning with the driver and that's obviously not going to engage because it's not going to come far enough to engage into the hub shell. Now, there's a couple of things that will cause that. One thing is the obvious, which is your helix thread on the driver itself. If you've got any particles or any kind of uh, dirt, grit, anything there, or if it's damaged, that's obviously going to cause the, the clutch not to engage. So both on your, in, your thread on the driver and your internal thread inside the clutch as well. So it's always a good idea to check that if you have inconsistent engagement. Uh, the other thing, once again, is your resistance mechanism. So if your resistance me mechanism isn't working, uh, correctly, then it's going to cause the clutch to sort of move around and not move freely on the driver or it could yeah, just have a bit of delay there. Now after a while, depending on the type of resistance you have, the resistance mechanism, if you have anything that has a bearing on the axle like this, which is protruding into the, the driver, you may get a groove. Uh, if it's sitting in one position too long, you'll get a wear mark on the inside of your clutch there. So you want to make sure you can check the inside of that and make sure it's nice and free. But you will feel that if there's any groove or any wear inside the clutch, you should be able to see that from setting everything up like this. So exploding it and basically checking that. That should be an easy way to check your engagement. Other things that you may not think about straight away is the axle itself. So if the axle is bent, uh, it's going to cause the, the clutch to engage on a different plane than the driver itself. So you'll get some inconsistencies there. You will also, yeah, if you have any wear to these bearings on the, uh, the resistance mechanism on this particular driver. But yeah, once you've isolated the, the resistance mechanism, you should be able to check that works. And the other question we get quite a lot is uh, in regards to slack adjustment and why it's important, how it works. In most clutch style free coaster systems, your slack adjustment basically is how much range you have. So if you have minimal range, so if you had a lot of spaces in this space here, re just restricting the amount of movement on the clutch, you're gonna have minimal slack. And adversely, if you have only a couple of spaces in there, you're gonna have a bigger range for the, the clutch to work. Now, we generally recommend that you, you, know, you have a decent amount of slack in most hubs. There's very little point in having a small amount of slack. The hardest thing to get used to or the biggest learning curve you have with any free coaster hub is the fact there is slack, not necessarily how much. So you're so used to standard engagement where a hub pedals uh, quite, quite quickly or quite instantly. Uh, with a free coast, it's really about training your, your brain or your, uh, your riding to be able to get used to that and you know, preempt the fact that it's not going to engage and you know, bang your knees into the stem. So uh, with that said, uh, there's certainly some people run a lot of slack because they never want it to engage, uh, but you will obviously have to pedal a lot for it to work. Uh, Brock runs probably about a crank and a half of slack in his hub, I think. So um, he just never wants it to engage. But yeah, as long as you're happy with that, that's fine. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's the fact there is slack more often than not. Another question we get is in regards to the resistance in general, or there's too much resistance when you're backpedaling. You might feel that the drivetrain feels really tight. If you've isolated everything else in the drivetrain itself and you're looking specifically at the hub, you just have to think about which components are moving at that time. So uh, obviously backpedaling, you have the driver bearings themselves. So checking the driver bearings, checking the driver on the axle. Uh, your clutch is going to be completely decked out. So it's gonna be at the extent of its- Another question that we get with free coaster hubs is in regards to grease and servicing. Uh, now most free coaster hubs will come with assembly grease inside. So I guess these guys, uh, this is a newer colony hub. Uh, this is the amount of grease that you will get, which is more than adequate inside a colony hub. You will see inside the resistance mechanism here, so they have your ball spring type resistant me resistance mechanism, but there's a lot of grease in there. You wanna make sure that stays clean. So if you do service the hub and you wanna pull it apart and clean it out, you need to make sure that it's clean and then you put that similar sort of amount of grease in there. I will go into more detail in regards to different types of hubs in another video. Each independently has 
its own quirks. The principles are the same. And with that said, we get a lot of questions about crank flips. Why your free coaster doesn't crank flip, or some free coasters crank flip better than others. Uh, the hardest thing you, with crank flips in regards to free coasters is you're, at one point, you're wanting your flutch in the free coaster to stay relative to the axle as much as possible, so you have consistent engagement. With crank flips, you obviously want the clutch to be free. At one point, you're asking it to be, once again, relative to the axle. With a crank flip, you want it to be able to spin really freely. So there is a fine line between having a clutch that moves freely on the axle and one that does actually engage consistently. So the best thing you want to make sure with that, uh, and I guess with, with anything else in regards to the hub, is that you, you keep it clean. So you certainly want to have grease on any moving component or any contact points. Yeah, it's good to have grease on, on the threads here. It's good to have a little bit on the outside of the clutch, uh, just a little. And it's certainly good to have grease on the inside of the clutch or on the resistance mechanism, however it works. Uh, now, yeah, just making sure that's clean. So if you are servicing the hub, it's always good to pull it apart, clean it, and then grease it when you put it back together. To summarise, we have the engagement system, so the relationship between the driver and the clutch. Then you have your resistance mechanism system, so the relationship between the clutch and the axle. Then we have the driver bearing system, so the relationship between the driver and the axle. And then finally, have you, you have your hub shell bearing system. So you have the non-drive side hub shell bearing, which is relative to the axle and the hub shell, and then the drive side hub shell bearing, which is relative to the hub shell and the outer face of the driver.